Hey everybody, today I need to explain functions. Think of a function as a block of reusable code. To invoke a function, you place a set of parentheses after the function name to invoke it. Here's a scenario. I need to sing happy birthday three times. I know it's a weird example, but it makes a lot of sense. Just trust me on this. If I need to sing happy birthday three times, I would write something like this. I'm going to create my own version of the happy birthday song. This is one verse. If I need to repeat this code three times without using functions, I could either repeat this code or maybe place it within a loop. So here's my happy birthday song three times, but there's a better way of handling this that doesn't involve repeating our code or using loops. What if I could write this code once, then reuse it whenever I need to? That's where functions come in. To define a function, you would type def, then a unique function name. Let's name this function the happy birthday function, add a set of parentheses, a colon, any code that belongs to the function, you'll want to indent underneath. Then to invoke this function, I would type the name of the function, happy birthday, add a set of parentheses, and that's it. When you invoke this function, you will execute this code once. If I need to execute this code three times, I would just call it two more times. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. To invoke a function, you type the function name, then add a set of parentheses. I like to think of the parentheses as a pair of telephones talking to each other. You call a function to invoke it. Hey, happy birthday function, execute your code. With functions, you are able to send data directly to a function. Using what are known as arguments, you can send values or variables directly to a function. Place any data within the set of parentheses. I'll send my function a first name. Any data you send a function are known as arguments, but you need a matching set of parameters that are in order. What exactly is the data we're sending in? Well, it's a name. I will add one parameter to my happy birthday function. I will name this data name. A parameter is kind of like a temporary variable that's used within a function. I'm going to replace this instance of you with a name. I will use an f string, replace you with a placeholder. I will add my parameter name. So happy birthday to bro. We could pass in some other names. What about Steve and Joe? Here we are. Happy birthday to bro. Happy birthday to Steve. Happy birthday to Joe. When you invoke a function, you can send more than one argument. Let's send an age this time. I'll send 20, 30, and 40. But when I run this, we have an error. We're passing in two arguments, but our function is set up only to take one. I would need a matching number of arguments. To invoke this function, we will need two parameters. We have a name and we have an age. Then let's use this age. You are, let's make this line an F string, age years old. Let's try that again. Happy birthday to bro, you are 20 years old. Happy birthday to Steve, you are 30 years old. Happy birthday to Joe, you are 40 years old. When you invoke a function, you can pass in some data. Those are known as arguments, but you'll need a matching set of parameters. The order does matter. Let's see what happens when I switch these two parameters. Age, then name. Happy birthday to 20, you are bro years old. Happy birthday to 30, you are Steve years old. Happy birthday to 40, you are Joe years old. So the position of the parameters does matter. Same thing goes with the arguments. You also could name these parameters something unique. Maybe X and Y. Happy birthday to X, you are Y years old. That's also valid. Let's try another example. I'm going to create a function to display an invoice. There will be three parameters, a username, an amount, and a due date. Let's print hello. I should make this an F string. Username. We'll use another F string. 
your bill of amount. Let's precede this placeholder with the unit of currency. I will also add a format specifier. Point to F is due on our due date, whatever that parameter is. To invoke this function, we will type the function's name, add a set of parentheses, a username, an amount, and a due date. Let's make up some username, an amount, I guess $42.50. I'm just making up a number here. Then a due date, the 1st of January, I guess. Here is my invoice. Hello, bro code. Your bill of $42.50 is due on January 1st. Let's change these arguments. Joe Schmo is the username. He owes $100 and one penny. Due on the 1st of February or January 2nd, depending on how you read dates in your region. Hello, Joe Schmo. Your bill of $100 and one cent is due on one slash two. That's another example. Now we need to explain the return statement. Return is a statement that is used to end a function and send a result back to the caller. Here's an example. We have a variable z. z will equal, will invoke a function to add two numbers together, such as the numbers one and two. When we invoke a function, we can send some data back. After adding one and two, we will send the result, which would be three then this value can be assigned to a variable. Then we can print whatever z is. So let's create some functions. Let's create a function to add two numbers together. The parameters will be x and y. Let's say z equals x plus y. Then we will return our value z. So I'm not going to print z directly right now. Let's subtract x and y. Subtract z equals x minus y. Return z. Multiply x times y. Then divide. x divided by y. Return z. Let's invoke our add function. Pass in two numbers. 1 and 2. Then I'm going to print the result. After adding these two numbers together, the result is 3. What about subtract? Subtract 1 and 2. The result is negative 1. Multiply. The result is 2. Then divide. 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. After we resolve this function, a value is returned. Just imagine that after we finish this function, this function becomes whatever is returned, 3. This function becomes negative 1. This function becomes 2. This function becomes 0 0.5. Let's write something a little more complex. We will create a function to create a full name. Create name. We'll need two parameters for a first name and a last name. I'll name these first and last. What do we want to do within this function? Let's capitalize the user's first name. First equals first dot capitalize method. Then do the same thing with the last name. Last equals last dot capitalize. Then I'm going to return the user's first name plus their last name. Then I'll add a space in between their first and last name. This is also valid. Outside of the function, let's create a full name variable, then invoke the create name function. So this function is going to capitalize the first and last name for us. I'll type in my first name, all lowercase, same thing with my last name. Then let's print our full name. And here is my full name variable. We sent our function some arguments. We have some parameters set up. We took those values, made them uppercase, then concatenated these strings together, then returned them as a single string. Let's try this with a different name. SpongeBob SquarePants. 
SpongeBob now has a full name. The first and last names are now capitalized. Using the return statement, you can return some data back to the place in which you call a function. Well, everybody, that's a function. It's a section of reusable code. To call a function, you type the function's name, add a set of parentheses. You can send a function some data, which are known as arguments, but you'll need a matching set of parameters. You also do have the option of returning some data back to the place in which you invoke a function. We'll be using functions a lot in the future, but we will get more practice with them. And those are functions in Python.